Hello, everyone, and welcome into the post game of the number one Tar Heels taking on the number four Alabama Crimson Tide in the Sweet 16. The game is over with now, and North Carolina has officially been eliminated after an 89 to 87 loss to the Crimson Tide in Crypto.com Arena. Uh, honestly, there's a lot to say about this game uh, personally. Um, First off, you want to give credit to Alabama. You know, this is a team that you knew came in. They could shoot the ball. We understood that. Uh, that we understood they had some depth there. A lot of people were kind of talking at me about the defense uh, and how the lack thereof for Alabama, considering that they, uh, on a consistent basis, they I think they averaged at uh, like 80 points allowed per game. And everybody was kind of talking about their defense it being so lackluster and things of that nature. But, um, you know, considering if you watch this Alabama team, yes, this team can score. But if they want to, they do have the size and they can go out there and defend. And tonight they showed that. Uh, they showed that their depth. They showed uh, an ability and the willingness to be able to change up the lineups, you know. Uh, they found a lineup that worked. Whatever worked at the time, that's what they threw at North Carolina. And they kept switching out and switching out and switching out until they finally found a lineup that uh, just continuously kept working. And um, I felt like that was something North Carolina did not do throughout the course of the game. I felt like to me that um, North Carolina, uh, especially like early when they went up 19 to 9, they had a, you know, they were on a roll, they were rolling really well. But then the switch came uh, when I think it was somebody went to the foul on. I forgot who it was. Maybe it was Armando. But the the switch came and it, we changed up. I felt like we changed up our lineup when we shouldn't have versus when we should have. And uh, that's something we're all going to break down. But really quickly, you know, I like to do stats first, get them out of the way, kind of talk about each team and how they did. So I'll start off with Alabama right here. So uh, had. Almost had four players with 20 plus points. Uh, Nelson, uh, he came in and he ended up dropping 24 points. Uh, he had five blocks, a steal, an assist, and 12 rebounds for Nelson. Great career game for him. Um, definitely a game he's, he's, I'm, I'm sure he's extremely proud of. And, uh, you know, if he's able to continue to build on that, Alabama can be pretty scary, especially as Mark Spears come out. And scored 18 points, had three turnovers, two steals, two assists, and two rebounds as well. He shot 7 of 14 from the field, 2 of 7 from the three-point line. Nelson shot 6 of 9 from the field and uh, hit both of his three-point shots, 10 of 13 from the foul line for Nelson. Uh, Griffin had 19 points on an assist and four rebounds. He shot 2 of 4 from the line. Uh, five of eight from the three-point line and six of 12 total from the field. And their other guy, other guard, uh, Estrada, had 19 points on a block, a steal, three assists, and four rebounds. He had he was one of four from the three-point line and was really getting it going from the mid-range here. Had nine, it hit nine of 17 uh, from the field total. But I felt like he did a really good job of getting into uh, the mid-range and into the paint there and creating some... Uh, some some great looks inside there and just able to you know lay a couple in a couple of them were tough got to give him credit there he did he did a great job man i thought he was um they're probably one of their best players all the way around in my opinion even a little bit better than uh nelson in my opinion i think nelson's height i kind of helped him out with a little bit of stuff even though he made some great shots nothing to take away from him but uh, i felt like estrada was maybe their one of their better all-around players uh throughout the entire course of the game but as a team, Alabama shot 32 of 67 from the field. That is good enough for 47.8%. They went 11 of 26 from the three-point line. That is 42.3%. And they hit 14 of 20 free throws. That is 70%. And over to North Carolina. Um, honestly, kind of very similar. You know, uh, four players that almost were up to 20 points. Those players were Harrison Ingram. He had 12 points on a block, two steals, five assists, and nine rebounds. Thought it was a really good game from him. Uh, five of 12 from the field, two of six from the three-point line. Armando Baycott finishes with 19 points. This is the last game in a Tar Heel jersey, too. It's, it, it hates, you hate to say it, but it's true. 
Uh, 19 points for him, had a block, two steals, 12 rebounds. Uh, he was three of four from the free throw line and eight of 18 from the field. Elliot Cadeau, eight points, uh, three at nine from the field, two of five from the three point line, had two rebounds and an assist. Uh, RJ Davis, even though he had a really slow start, did start getting going a little bit there in the second half. Now he finished with 16 points on one block, two steals, seven assists, three rebounds, shot eight of nine from the free throw line, O of nine from the three point line, and four of 20 from the field. Bad, bad night for him shooting. And uh, it really, it really hurt the team a lot. But uh, Cormac Bryan being the last guy had 17 points, really came out hot. Uh, early in the in the early going against this team, uh, we had 17 points, two steals, an assist, five rebounds, uh, two of two from the free throw line, five of eight from the three point line, and five of ten total. Uh, as a team, North Carolina shot 30 of 78 from the field. That is good for 38 and a half percent. 12 of third, uh, 12 of 32 for um, from the three point line. That is good enough for 37 and a half percent. And 15 of 17 from the free throw line. That is 88.2 percent. Well, now that all the stats are out of the way, we can finally talk about this game. What do I think? What, what happened? What went wrong? What, what, what is the primary reason for North Carolina's loss? Quite frankly, I don't have one. I don't have a primary reason they lost. The only thing to me that sticks out more than anything is in the first half, I thought Elliot and Seth Trimble played well. I really did. I thought Elliot was getting after it. Uh, they were taking, the, you know, Alabama did a good job of keeping their offense moving. And this is something that I have consistently talked about throughout the season with this basketball team. Carolina has a tendency, and not every game, but you see it pretty consistently where on offense they run the same set over and over again instead of doing like Alabama did so Alabama we know can shoot the three ball right everybody knew that going into the game you know they score on an average 90 points per game that's their average right now so obviously these this team can score right but North Carolina is not a team to sneeze at when it comes to scoring either but the biggest problem is Carolina's offenses move a lot and why it doesn't, I don't know. Because when it moved tonight, especially right there in the, the later half of the game, when Carolina was down five and then come back on a, on a six-point swing and goes up one, what was that offense doing? It was moving. It was making the defense have to work. They're making the opponent have to work. If you're not doing that, especially given the size that Alabama has, then the team's just going to be able to sit there and basically catch their breath. Hey, you're not making you know, the same move each time. RJ Davis, high ball screen from Armando or Harrison, generally from Armando. And Alabama had scouted that, knew that was going to be the case, and made it to where RJ Davis was not going to be able to get the edge on anybody who came to uh, switch off on him. They made it to where RJ could not get around that ball or get around that screen at all without catching one, if not two bodies. And after that happened, Carolina had no answer. They just start passing the ball around and start scrambling. And that's the biggest problem. I don't know why North Carolina would not get that offense moving because when it did move, layups, dunks, wide open three-point shots, you know, the shots that you want – the chances at the basket that you want were there. So that is one thing that bothered me. I, I think that's, to me, one of the bigger things that I think about with North Carolina. Um, And the number two thing, uh, personally, that I saw is, and I, I mentioned at the very beginning of this, the inability to change the lineup. And, you know, I kind of saw a stat quickly before I, I, I started this, but Pax and Wojcik in the second half played a lot of minutes. Um, 
you didn't see Elliot Cadeau or Seth Trimble for a long time, for a very long time. Your best guard defender, right? And a guy who's guarded people a little bit taller than him, that's for sure. You know, we've saw it consistently throughout the season here. He's, I, you know, easily they're, you know, your best defender. Um, He sat on the bench for a while. Elliot Cadeau, a guy who helps initiate the offense a little bit, on the bench. I understand he's not an offensive threat, really, unless you're talking about finishing at the rim, but by God, yeah, he is. But maybe you get him out there to help initiate the offense because R.J. Davis, considering the type of night that he was having, and, and, and I give credit to North Carolina and saying, you know, R.J. Davis had that bad of a night and they stayed in this game. That's how close they are. That's how close they were. A couple of adjustments. And Carolina's probably walking out of this game with the win. And it's these these things that I'm talking about are the adjustments I believe should have been made. Now, I'm not a coach. I'm just a fan. I'm just a guy I love you know, watching the sport. But I look at Alabama, and Bama threw whatever they could at North Carolina until they found something that worked. When something worked, they kept to it until it didn't work anymore. And then they changed it up until they found something that worked. North Carolina, when they got in this stretch right here, especially in the second half, they stopped looking for answers and just said, okay, well, no matter what, we're going to keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep doing, keep doing the same things, keep doing the same things. And Alabama figured them out. It, it wasn't hard because Nelson got down there, started being able to do whatever he wanted to do, whatever he wanted to do. And that was that. <laughs> just waiting for the final buzzer at that point. And then when RJ finally was able to get going a little bit, okay, he started to catch a spark and he kept us right there in it. But by then it was already too late. They had the momentum. And then Jalen Withers, and I, and I already see it, uh, the Withers shot, I did not like at all. Now, is the Withers shot the reason we lost the game? No. But that shot at the very end of the game did not help us at all. Way too early in the shot clock. You didn't have to take that shot. I understand in his head, I'm wide open. Withers like, I've knocked this shot down plenty of times. I'm going to take it because, it. I mean, let, let's flip it on its head. If Withers hits that shot, we're not having this conversation. It's a bad shot. Oh, my God. Um, they, they we're, we're not having that conversation. It's like, oh, my God, Withers, big time three. Here we go. But. The problem, and no, it's it's not the reason that we lost the game. I mean, you, the things that I was mentioned that led to this not getting back in transition that was nothing that killed Carolina, North Carolina not getting back in transition, especially um, after you know you score a basket. Hey, that's great. Get right back on defense because that's one thing Alabama did do all night is they kept the pressure on Carolina no matter what. If they scored. Alabama got in there and checked that ball in quick and got back out in transition. And a lot of times they got a good number of open threes on that. Um, and that's that that's something that they challenged them with. So uh, you, you got to give Alabama credit there. But uh, honestly, I think it's the it, – you look at it, it was the unwillingness to change when things were not working, uh, coupled with – um, you know, keeping keeping some players off off the court that needed to be on, especially Seth Trimble. And uh, I have to, you know, I'm happy with the bench uh, play today. You know, Washington came in, did good. I thought Withers played really well when he came in as well. Um, and uh, Withers came in and played well. Washington came in and played well. I, I thought Wojcik, and I, I like that Wojcik was in. I just don't think he should have been in as much as he was, uh, unfortunately. But you know, I thought he was a good spark off the bench, and this team needed it. I do think they should have, you know, continued to go to Cormac a little bit because Cormac was hot, man. He was red hot. And uh, I thought even Cormac, he, he caught the ball a couple of times. I thought he had a wide open 
uh, shot at a three, and he kind of hesitated. I felt Armando was kind of hesitant a little bit with some of the looks he got down there in the post. Um, some turnovers early in the game kind of hurt Carolina, especially once they got up in that 10-point lead, the 19-9 to run. Um, so it's uh, a lot of things are coupled to it, but, you know, Alabama's a good team. You, you, you can't say that Alabama's not. You know, everybody was kind of talking about their defense. I get that, but Alabama's a good good basketball team, and they have a shot. You know, if they go out there and continue to play defense like that and continue to run their offense like that, the, the Alabama-Clemson game is going to be a very fun game to watch. I'm not going to lie. Like, it's going to be a tough matchup because both teams, in my opinion, are very, very similar. Very, very similar. And it's – it's that's going to be an interesting matchup. I'm, I'm very excited to see how this thing goes, bro. I, I really am. So, uh, anyway – Sucks to see the season's ending, especially on that note. Um, you know, you would hope, you know, in a different not not saying you have to go win the national championship or anything, it'd be great, obviously, to win the national championship, but you would you would hope you would go out in a better performance than that. You know, maybe um a team to you know, like a Yukon or something like that. You know, just just throwing that out there in a blaze of glory, I guess. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. But uh, hey, you know, great game. And uh, congratulations to Alabama. It's all you can do, man. Congratulations to them. But um, a lot of things are coming afterwards. Got a, th- a lot of things to talk about. Probably going to do a UNC basketball like post mortem, I guess you can say, uh, show out of uh, a- after everything's done and the the dust to settle. Maybe even after the uh, the national championship game, we might even do it because I got some travels coming up this coming weekend so i won't be here anytime um you know we'll, we'll, i'll be keeping an eye on it and uh, we'll see how the rest of this thing goes you know we still got uh some more games tomorrow we got duke nc state playing tomorrow um i honestly think both duke and nc state are probably going home after tomorrow and then we'll go from there i don't know who to pull for i guess i'll pull for clemson because i'm not pulling for any of the other two acc schools so yeah, it is what it is. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for being here. Hopefully, you all have enjoyed this. And uh, it's been a great basketball season. I've had a lot of fun with you guys throughout the season. And uh hate the way it ended, but it's been absolutely fun. So uh, keep it locked to Hill Brothers. If you're new to the channel, be sure and hit that subscribe button and hang out with us. And uh, get ready to enjoy some, some more stuff. We got football season starting up. And, um, you know, baseball is going pretty hot right now. I know they're getting ready to play Wake Forest. So that'll be a fun game. So our fun series. So that'll be, it'll be a good time, man. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for being here. And as always, go heels. You don't want none. I'm good.